Can you tell us what was revealed? Oh, um, so one huge reveal that we uh, that we hope to give the audience is that Angus is coming back, um, Lane's dad, and he's going to be a series regular for this season, which is pretty awesome. Uh, we're going to see a lot more of him in season four. Um, he's kind of become this. Uh, fanatical, religious zombie leader uh, in Seattle. And so I think that's going to be great stuff for him to work with. Um, he's a super talented guy. Um, another little spoiler that we that we gave out were uh, a couple of the, the brains that are going to be on this season. Um, we've got Hockey Boom, which is pretty fantastic. I know Diane's really excited about that, our executive producer. Um, what else? There's another brain too that they told me about. Um, oh, we've got a, a Seattle Seahawks fan, which is going to be hilarious, especially because our show shoots in Vancouver, but is um, is based in Seattle. So I think that's good. We're repping the city a bit. Um, there is a possibility for a Robbie and Peyton rekindling. We'll have to see where and when that happens, but that door is not completely shut. There's a couple there. <laughs> don't you feel a little bit annoyed as an actress sometimes that you're being ping pong between men? You're like, damn good, I don't need to be doing this, or I hear her heart speaks more in both directions. Well, it's funny because I'm going to have my personal preference, as in what I would want Peyton to be with if she was my friend. And I would be continuing to point her in the direction of Robbie because I think that that relationship is actually really good even though they've had their ups and downs and you know he was he was with Patty and, and had that moment of weakness but you know they were together they like really were broken up um, and guys make stupid choices and so do we as women so I think at the end of the day um, you know being able to forgive someone for uh, their mistakes like, is, is a great um I don't know, it's something that's, that comes with age and, and wisdom, and you've kind of seen these characters now grow up, you know, they've been in this, in this very compact world for these past, you know, three seasons, and you, you see how they, you know, have matured in their relationships, or, or not, um, whether they've changed, or, um, you know, even, even become more empowered and impassioned about what they believe in, you know, I think you've seen uh, the Liv character start out as, you know, kind of unsure of how she's going to deal with these brains and, and deal with these episodes that she goes through. Um, and then, you know, as the storyline progresses, you see her handle them better and better. And, and even though, you know, she's like, oh, what brain is going to do this week? Like, she's prepared and ready to take on that, that person's characteristics and personality. And she's doing it for the better good of, of the zombies out there that, that need help. And the people that, that need their crime solved, you know, that, that would be unsolved murders if it wasn't for her, um, her ability to, to see into their lives. Yeah, of all the characters, your character seems to have risen the highest in her occupation over the last few seasons. She, yeah, she's That's like, she's jumped some serious um, ladders at that at that stage in, in her career. Um, and you kind of see her now juggling the role of being right hand to the mayor, but also um, as a prosecutor now, you know, she was just an assistant DA, and she's now kind of forced into this position because so many people have left and scattered throughout the U.S. and away from Seattle because of these walls being built up around the city to kind of quarantine and, and um, you know, trap out all the zombies inside. Um, it kind of leaves her in in this crisis of like, well, somebody needs to prosecute these, you know, zombie versus human murders and you're kind of the only one around, so the job's yours now. <laughs> Okay. Wait, let's do one, one, let's do one more question, yeah. So, uh, are we going to see more, maybe, zombie on zombie or zombie on human crimes now? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're going to see all of it. I think I think this year, kind of the rule book is, like, thrown out in a way. I mean, obviously, we have our, our, um, our zombie rules, but in a sense of what's going to go down it's like anything now because anything goes it, the secret's out the world knows it's it's not a mystery anymore um, and now zombies are living among us whether it's peacefully or violently uh, we have to deal with that as humans and there's very much a zombie versus humans type of uh, you know scenario happening here and, and you're either on one team or the other 
I think that obviously Peyton knows what it's like to be a human because she is a human, and so therefore she sympathizes with the people out there that are having a hard time accepting the zombies. But she's also super aware of how these zombies are being segregated and being treated when some of them are not violent and are not acting out and, and are not killing innocent humans for brains. But that they need to be fed and they need food, and the only way for them to feed is, is off the road. So I think that she sees both sides of the story on this one. Um, but I think only, you know, a few characters could really say that because she kind of has a foot in, in each, each uh, world. Cool. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Sorry we're so grown quick. <laughs>